Hi, my name's Toby. I'm from Wheelbase, the UK's largest cycle store. We're here at our big demo weekend in March uh, 2011. We run this every year. It's the fourth year we've done it. And we are uh, one of Trek's largest dealers, and we're, we're, we're well behind Trek. I'm here with Wayne, who's one of the tech managers from Trek. And here we're going to talk through some of the range and, and what Trek have been up to. We've got a very, very strong range. They have had it for a number of years now, and it's uh, certainly one of our best-selling lines. Our uh, number one selling full sus bike is the Fuel EX. Um, number of models available and um, this is um, by far the number one trail bike that, 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 that we do. There is a top fuel which is below this. Uh, we tend not to do many of those, so it is a strong bike. It's maybe not sometimes for the, UK, the conditions around here in the lakes. A lot of riders favour the, the Fuel EX, which is the extended travel uh, version. And then they also run the Remedy. The Remedy is more into the all mountain camp. Uh, a larger Traveller 160 bike, and then the new one is a Scratch as well, which came out last year, and that they're pushing that more with the, the new Air version, which is a, a lighter version of the Scratch. It all centres around the ABP, which is, um, which is the linkage at the back here, and uh, Wayne's going to run through that in a bit more detail. So I'm just going to pass over to Wayne now. He's going to talk you through the range and also some of the key features on the linkage. Thank you, Toby. So one of the important things to remember when you're looking at Trek full suspension bikes is all of the bikes run on the same full suspension system. So whether you buy a top fuel or you buy a session like uh, Tracy's bike we've got behind me, they're all running the same system. They all have the, uh, the three uh, key features with a couple of extra bits on, uh, on the EXs and the, uh, the Remedy here. So those three key things that all link all those bikes together are the ABP back end, the Evo link and the full floating shock. Um, and I'll go through all those things now. So ABP, this is the killer thing. This is what everyone talks about. ABP means active braking pivot. And what it does is it separates your braking forces from the suspension. With a traditional bike, when you grab a handful of brakes, the suspension will effectively stiffen up and actually feel like a hardtail when you're riding. Yeah, yeah. So with an ABP system, the caliper effectively becomes floating and it rotates concentric to the rear pivot. And it means that when you grab a handful of brake, the, uh, the, the caliper itself can actually travel up and down in an almost uh, vertical line. And it means that the suspension continues to move even when you've got the ha hands on the brakes. And it feels completely natural. You almost don't feel like it's there until you ride another bike that's got it. And then all of a sudden you really miss having that ABP. It's a completely natural feeling. Obviously you're braking on the descent, aren't you? So, you know, you, want your, you don't want to be having the wheel skipping The around. suspension it's... needs to move all the time, yeah. not just when, you're, when the brakes are off. So having the, having the suspension active while the, uh, while the brakes are applied is just a big benefit. It gives you more grip more of the time. Yeah. So that's, that's the big thing that everyone talks about. But it's a whole lot more than just ABP. Um, I mentioned Evo Link. The Evo Link is a one-piece rocker link. Um, I have one here. And try as you might, you cannot bend this on its own. So adding this into the whole system is extremely light but extremely stiff um, rocker link, which makes the whole system really, really stiff. Very, very wide as well. Um, and it's much stiffer than any two-part bolt-together system you'll see out there. Is that made from magnesium, is it, that one? That's... This one's made from magnesium. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very complicated way of making it. It's like a thixotropic material that's, um, that allows you to almost injection mould metal, even though it's uh, still a solid. It's a fantastic uh, uh, bit of kit there. Very, very light and, as I say, very stiff. You, you, you can't bend that with your hands, no matter how hard you try. Um, and the third uh, piece that all these bikes have uh, in common is the full floating shock. So rather than taking our shock and bolting it directly to the mainframe and then actuated by the, uh, the rocker link itself, we actually have the bottom uh, link of the shock is attached to the swing arm. So if I move uh, the top down here now, you can see the bottom of the shock is moving away from the top. And what that does is that means that... Uh, Instead of the, uh, the shock ramping up, the air, the air curve ramping up at the top there, because the bottom falls away slightly, it flattens out that ramp curve. And what it effectively does on the trail is it makes the bike feel like it has bottomless amounts of travel. Um, and actually, a, a 120 bike like the EX will feel more like a 140 bike. Um, and those are the three, uh, three things that are on all these bikes you see here. Some additional features for the, um, the uh, Remedy and the EX, which are again proprietary to Trek, are uh, the DRCV shock. Now it's, it's got Fox on the shock, but it's a Trek design and it's a, it's a fantastic design. With a standard air can, uh, the small uh, standard air can, very good for small bump compliance, it supports you well at the uh, first part of the travel, but if you take a big hit, it just ramps up very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it doesn't feel very plush when you get further into the travel. 
So a lot of uh, companies will put a big air can on the bike, and with a big air can, it's good for those big hits. It goes through the travel, it gets right in deep into the travel, but it's not very good at supporting you, and it's not very good at those small hits. So with a with a DRC V shock, a dual rate control valve, we actually have two different shocks at two different parts of the travel. So for the first 50%, as you can, you may be able to see here, for the first 50% of the travel, you, we are only using the small air can. But once it goes past 50% and the shock body hits the little plunger that you see in here, it opens up a little valve in the top, the top chamber opens up and you now have a large volume air can. So it's a small volume air can where a small cut, uh, air can is best and it's a large air can where a large air can is best. It's two shocks in one. So it's a, uh, as again, proprietary to Trek, no one else can use this and it's the weight of a um, uh, an air can, but with the feel of a coil spring between that and the full floater. And you've developed this in conjunction with Fox, have you? Have you? Um, it's pretty much Trex design, and Fox built it for us. So okay. it's not even a, it's not even a a, 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 a corporation. It's they, they build it for us because they're the best at building shocks. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but it's actually a Trek design completely. It's uh, designed by a guy called Jose Gonzalez. Right, yeah. Um, in our R and D uh, department. And you still use the RP23 uh, we control? We do. We use RP23. Uh, to be honest, um, Pro pedals not necessarily on a on a Trek bike because of the pivot placement. We don't suffer from pedal induced bob um, so to be honest we actually on our, our demos i recommend people run it in the off position the bike itself it has it because it's uh, it's a complicated shock and and everyone else has um, a pro pedal but to be honest we recommend you run it off we don't need it the, the, the suspension is designed in such a way that you don't have that pedal induced bob and if you're buying one of these bikes obviously set up's key on these shocks isn't it there's, there's absolutely a specific way that you need to yeah um, if you set it up for yourself um, it's very similar to a standard shock but with two extra steps because you've got two air chambers you need to wind the shock pump on just that half turn more to get access to both chambers. Yeah, yeah. And once you've set up your um, set up your pressure, which if you're on a rough guide very quickly, it's your weight in pounds plus 20, and that it works out for your PSI. Okay. Um, but once you've set that into the shock, you need to cycle it and set the shock up. So you need to take off the shock pump and you need to um, compress the shock at least two, three times to let the air settle in the correct chambers. Yeah. And then once you've done that, you set up your sag in a very similar way to any other shock. And we actually have these little things called sagometers which come with the bikes, which make it super simple for a consumer yeah. or even the guys in the shop to know exactly where the, sh the sag should be on all those bikes. And they're all individual to the bikes themselves so it's kind of quite a firm press on the saddle and, and push it push it yeah. through, through its travel just you just put it through put it, push it through past 50 percent just to allow that air to get to the right places and to settle down in the shock and once it's there it's good to ride and you'll never ever feel the transition between those two parts of the shock okay. fantastic design and a query we often get asked on in the shop is is, is the bearings what, what how, how do you work your bearings um, the bearings are all press fit into the in, into the frame and actually in fact on our on our carbon um, bikes the the bearings the bottom bracket bearings are actually slip fit directly onto carbon um, Trek are the only company that have the technology and the tolerances to be able to take a carbon fibre product and actually have the bearings sit directly on top of them it's the bear uh, the, the carbon is designed to be strong enough and it means you can just slip those bearings straight in just with your thumbs and then yeah. pop them out again yeah. um, and also on the main pivot bearing you get free replacement bearings for the lifetime of the original owner yeah. so it's a great great feature fantastic yeah. Yeah. one of the uh, other things that's worth mentioning on our, on our product which other people don't uh, don't do yet is um, obviously we have OCLV carbon um, which is uh, proprietary to Trek, but we also have a new OCLV mountain. And now this is for those bigger bikes like the EX Carbon, the Remedy Carbon, and people are worried about whether their carbon is strong enough to, make, to be able to take those impacts with yeah. things like rock strike. Sure, Around here, yeah. it's a big thing. You have some big rocks and they, and they fly up off the front wheel and they hit the frame. Yeah. So with a carbon bike, it's, they're not usually designed to take impact damage, but we have this OCLV mountain and it's a fortified version of our OCLV yeah, yeah. that's internally stronger, yeah. designed to take impacts. Um, and then we also have a protective polymer shield on the outside, which is not just a sticking plaster on the outside. It's just designed to stop any uh, cosmetic damage. Yeah. But internally, the carbon is stronger and designed to take those impact damages. And we actually have an aerospace test that we use to, 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 to test this. And you can see that online if you go to the Trek website. Um, you can see that uh, impact test being done and just how strong this carbon is. Yeah. O OCLV, this is made in the States, isn't it? This is. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. purely uh, US made. Um, uh, it stands for Optimum Compaction 
low void. Um, so it's a proprietary uh, layup schedule um, to Trek. So it's not about the material we make it from, it's about the process we put it through to turn it into the finished product. Sure, sure. It's from the, high, the highest quality in the, in the world, isn't it? Your, yeah, your absolutely, product. absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's not a Taiwanese product, it is, it's US made. Um, yeah about 15 years ahead of pretty much anything else and even ahead of the Formula 1 industry when it comes to uh, carbon technology. Yeah. We really are out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then just running this through the range then, we've got, uh, we've got the Fuel EX, which I obviously mentioned before. Yep. Uh, our best-selling full suspension bike. It's a, perf it's a perfect all-round bike. You can ride this around the local lake, which is perfectly flat, take it to your trail centres, somewhere like this, rocky, or you can even get away with taking it to the Alps as well. So it's a very good all-round bike. And we know it's got the ABP, we've, we've kind of talked through that already. Uh, any key changes for, for 2011 on yeah. the, the, the Fuel EX? The, the biggest thing for this year is um, what we call ABP Converts, which allows us to take the rear end and depending on what wheel system you're choosing to use, depends on what bolt through you're using on the rear end. So we can either have on the, on the higher end bikes, we stock them with a 142 by 12 rear axle, so this is a, a Maxxle design for our ABP system. And that adds another, um, it makes the rear end of these bikes 40% stiffer than a, um, an open dropout system. So the 140 by 12 you can have in there. Or if you um, have a standard set of wheels, you don't want to run the wider wheel set, you can just actually swap out the hardware or, or that goes in the back very, very simply, just with one spanner. And you can actually put in the standard ABP rear end, which on, it, on its own is still 30% stiffer than an open dropout system. So even though it may only be five minutes, it's still a bolt through and it's still much stiffer than the standard dropouts on a bike. Yeah. We didn't mention before, did we, on, on the ABP, to undo the rear wheel, you undo the skewer completely, yeah. don't it, you? It's a bolt through system, yeah. so you have to undo the QR and remove it from the bike. It's not an a open dropout, it's a bolt through system. Yeah, excellent. And then obviously going up in travel now, we go up to the Remedy. Yeah. Again, another popular bike for the lakes, you know, it's well, well yeah. suited for the riding Perfect around, for around here. here. It's, um, it's basically the, uh, the EX's big brother. It climbs just as well as the EX. It descends that little bit more comfortably because it's a little bit slacker, a little bit shorter. Um, it has 150 travel like over the 120 of the EX. Um, but the weights are very, very similar. There's only half a pound difference between the two bikes, spec for spec. Right, yeah. um, so, and, and that's what makes it climb just as well. It's just that little bit shorter, and yeah. that's the only thing, it's only drawback from the climbs. And, uh, this is the bike I choose to ride for every day, for every situation. Yeah, yeah. you do the, obviously, the carbon version of that. That's yeah. super quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 150 bike, and we're still running full OCLV carbon on there. Yeah, yeah, excellent. And then the Scratch. The Scratch is, uh, again, ABP bike. Yeah, the Scratch is, uh, is uh, it was new last year but we've gone through a lot of changes for this year the weights come right down um, this scratch air model here is running about 32 pounds so perfectly pedalable um, for all the climbs even around here but really really designed for the downhills to make those downhills as pleasurable as possible you could take this down a downhill course if you want to and then ride it back up to the top again um, this is the air version so it has more of a range of gears it has air shocks on them to bring that weight down on the lighter weight wheel set it's got a big it's got a coil version as well um, further up the range, which is obviously coil shocks. The, uh, the gear range on them is only a 1x9 system, so more designed as a play bike. Still pedalable, but because of the weight of the bike, you'd more likely use it on an uplift day. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Then I mean, we top out then with the session. Yeah, and we've got here, this is actually not a stock session. This is, uh, tr this is Tracy Mosley's yeah, actual yeah. race bike. We've, Very fortunate uh, to have it here. Yeah, we've been, lent, been lent it for the day. Um, the session is a, a, a very popular bike with the downhillers. It's completely changed um, uh, the people's opinion on trek and downhill. Uh, it's gone from pretty much um, only free ride offerings to having this out of the box race bike and it's been extremely popular. The changes to this year are, only, are very minimal but look quite a lot. We've got a new aero down tube which um, some people have, have scoffed at saying why are we interested in saving um, time with aerodynamics on a downhill bike. Well the top three riders in a downhill uh, in a World Cup level are probably only point one of a second between each Absolutely, other. There's, there's, yeah, yeah. there's tenths of yeah. seconds there yeah. so any aero advantage is going to be uh, an advantage yeah. so by having this aero down tube which is the biggest frontal area that Trek has as, as control over we've made it as aero as possible obviously with the forks we, we haven't got control over those um, and, the, and what the rider wears we can't control but with that part we can make a difference so we have done and we've also by doing that made it a much stronger for impact resistance and you can see on, on a lot of these bikes on the um, on the uh, session and on the scratches we've got down tube protection to stop from that rock strike coming up from down there yeah. and also on the session we've got some nice bump stops as well which are actually reinforced into the frame they're not just a sticky patch on there 
that's actually a reinforced um, pin all the way through. Yeah. So yeah. You know, if you crash this, you're, you're much less likely to get any damage to yeah. the frame. And you can so see that technology, that ABP running through that, exactly yep. the same. ABP on there, exactly. This is 150 downhill back end, but okay. this, this ABP is there, Evo Link is there. The full floating shock is all on here, exactly the same as it would be on the top fuel. It's uh, it's lightweight, 100 mil travel, um, enduro um, younger brother. Yeah, and I know the sessions have, have been really popular. I mean, for out of the box yeah. performance, I don't yeah. think anything can, yeah. anything you, really top you, it. You can you can get out of the box and you can race it with the components it's got on it. It is a race ready bike. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Wayne. No trouble. Cracking range of bikes. Thank Enjoy you. the day. Cheers.